The Philippines records 6,958 new cases of COVID-19 Monday, August 10. This is the highest single-day increase in cases and brings the total to 136,638. The latest data shows 60% of the new cases are from Metro Manila. The rise in cases continues to put a strain on hospitals in the capital region, where critical care capacity is in the danger zone as of August 9. Researchers from the University of the Philippines Okta Group estimate infections nationwide could reach 150,000 cases by the end of August, even with the reimposition of a modified general community quarantine or MECQ. Meantime, the pandemic's impact on the economy could lead to 1.5 million Filipinos becoming poor. The Philippine Institute for Development Studies, or PIDS, says the poor, the low-income, and the lower-middle-income groups are vulnerable to public health challenges and the economic consequences of containing the pandemic. The August 2020 study projects it will take years for low-income families to escape poverty. PIDS says if everyone's incomes decrease by 5%, the proportion of extremely poor Filipinos can increase by 1.1%. The Philippines is now in recession as the economy shrank by 16.5% in the second quarter of 2020, the sharpest drop ever on record. In related news, television host Willie Revillame barges into presidential spokesman Harry Roque's virtual press briefing on Friday, August 7, to talk about his charity efforts and even plug his GMA7 show. Before Roque's briefing ends, Revillame suddenly walks into the frame carrying a chair, which he then places beside Roque. He then begins to ask Roque and his guest Cavite Governor John Vicremulia questions of his own. The GMA7 host even whips out his checkbook to show he is serious about giving money to jeepney drivers begging in the streets and the families of Filipinos killed in Beirut. Roque thanks Revillame for allowing the spokesman to use rooms in Will Tower for his press briefings during the pandemic. <laughs> Longtime peasant leader and activist Randy Echanis is killed early morning Monday, August 10, inside his own home in Quezon City. Echanis, 72, was chair of party list Anak Pawis and deputy secretary general of Kilusang Magbubukid ng Pilipinas or KMP. Former Anak Pawis representative Ariel Casilao says Echanis was undergoing medical treatment and unarmed when police forces raided his house. Echanis is an agrarian reform advocate and helped craft the genuine agrarian reform bill. He also served as political consultant for the National Democratic Front of the Philippines or NDF. He is the third NDF political consultant to be killed after Sotero Llamas and Randy Malayao. Echanis is the latest activist killed under the Duterte administration. In April, Bayan Muna Iloilo coordinator Jory Porquilla was killed inside his home. National Union of People's Lawyers President Edre Olalia, who is also the legal consultant of the NDF negotiating panel, links the killing to the contested anti-terror law. In a statement, KMP says it has, quote, all reasons to believe that this is the handiwork of state forces and mercenaries of the Duterte government. Two top officials of the Philippine Health Insurance Corporation or PhilHealth notify the Senate of their health problems. The officials say this may prevent them from physically attending the second hearing on alleged corruption in the state health insurer. The next Senate hearing on the PhilHealth controversy is set for Tuesday, August 11. PhilHealth President and CEO Ricardo Morales sent the Senate committee a medical certificate stating he is undergoing chemotherapy and his immunity is compromised. Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer Arnel De Jesus meantime cites an unforeseen medical emergency. Morales and De Jesus physically attended the Senate committee's first hearing on the corruption allegations on Tuesday, August 4. The hearing ran for 10 straight hours. Senator Panfilo Laxon says the field health officials' failure to attend the upcoming hearing would be their loss, not the Senate's. Laxon says they wouldn't be able to respond to quote-unquote new incriminating evidence in the Senate committee's possession. Meantime, Morales says he regrets his privacy has not been respected after a copy of his medical certificate sent to the committee was leaked to reporters Saturday morning. Police arrest Hong Kong media mogul Jimmy Lai Monday, August 10 under the new national security law. 
Lai is one of the city's most vocal Beijing critics. He is accused of fraud and of colluding with foreign forces. He owns the Apple Daily newspaper and Next magazine, two outlets unapologetically pro-democracy and critical of Beijing. The offices of the newspapers are also raided by the police Monday, and six others are arrested with Lai. Shares of Lai's media group soar more than 300% Monday, August 10, as democracy activists urged investors to support the media company after its owner was arrested. Residents of the city say Lai is an unlikely hero, a pugnacious, self-made tabloid owner and the only tycoon willing to criticize Beijing and the national security law. Emily Lau, former Democratic Party member of the Hong Kong Legislative Council, says civil society now fears the possible extradition of Lai to mainland China. A photo circulating online shows a crater formed in the wake of the Beirut explosions. This claim is false. The photo is of the Tianjin explosions in China in 2015. On August 5, Facebook page Astro Child posted a photo of a huge crater with a caption, Pray for Lebanon. It was posted with three other photos of destroyed buildings and fires. The page has at least 600,854 followers, and the post has at least 1,400 reactions and 380 shares. A reverse image search reveals the original photo was sourced from the European Press Photo Agency or EPA. The original caption by the EPA reads, An aerial view of a large hole in the ground in the aftermath of a huge explosion that rocked the port city of Tianjin, China, 15 August 2015. In 2015, explosions occurred at the hazardous goods storage facility in the Chinese port of Tianjin, killing at least 165 people. It was used in articles on the chemical blast by The Independent and the BBC. This claim was also fact-checked by News Mobile on August 7. 